Clark Station line was reported at approximately discharge pressures. No record of flow is available. Units number three and four were installed in 1915. Daily pump report shows them running on November the 8th, 1915. Uh, units six and eight were installed in 1916 and were started on December the 7th, 1916. Uh, here's Charlie Rice, district foreman, to tell you something about these units. These horizontal engines made in Buffalo, New York, replaced the steam engines that have been used in the gas industry for many years. The snow engines here at Heat Station are of the 450 horsepower size, with two power cylinders and two double-acting power pistons. Cylinder size is 20 inch in diameter with 36 inch stroke. The top speed of the engine is 125 revolutions per minute. The total weight of one of these units is about 90 ton. The main frame weighs 16 ton. The flywheel is 12 feet in diameter and weighs around 11 ton. The floor space for one of these horizontal snow engines is about 1,500 square feet. A heavy duty engine, the same weight and size, would develop 3,000 horsepower and have about the same square footage of floor space. The Snow Steam Pump Works is credited as being the first American company to build a large industrial type gas engine. Two features of the design of the snows differ from what was designed before, being that First, the adoption of a side crank in place of the center crank frame, and second, that the valves all open to a chamber at the side of the cylinder. All inlet valves and their gear are on top of this chamber, and all exhaust valves and gearing on the bottom. This arrangement simplifies the valve gearing in that both inlet and exhaust valves on each cylinder are operated by a single cam. Another distinct advantage of this design is that the cylinders can be kept lower, making the engine rigid and steady. The foundation can be one solid block instead of a series of isolated pieces. The bed plate is continuous under all these cylinders, and the latter slide upon this plate on machine surfaces, allowing for expansion and contraction. Ignition also takes place in this chamber. Two mechanical igniters located in each chamber are operated through a single trip rod by a replaceable cam on the camshaft. The cam pushes the trip rod, permitting the contact the igniters to touch, thus completing the battery circuit through remotely located coils, causing a buildup of magnetic force. Then the cam passes and the rod trips the points open and the coils discharge across the gap, firing the compressed fuel. Natural gas is used for the fuel and is mixed in mixing chambers shared by each set of two cylinders. They are operated by a centrifugal governor, which is belt driven from the flywheel. The mixing valves are designed to maintain the same mixture, whether they are fully open or partially closed. The engine bearing oil system is also unique, being entirely external, one common system serving all six units. The main frame slides, timing gear case, and outward bearing drains are gathered by a gravity drain system through a settling tank in the basement where water and heavy materials are settled out of the oil. It then passes through a standpipe to the bottom of a pumping tank where the settling process is repeated. The oil is then pumped from this tank to a filter tank on floor level where it's filtered through cloth bags. The filtered oil is then pumped to an overhead tank which is common with oil lines to all engines providing gravity flow to any unit which is opened into the system. A double acting piston pump is attached to the camshaft of each engine. The top end pumps from the basement tanks to the filter tank. The bottom end pumps from the filter tank to overhead. The only major difference in the 1912 units, number one and number two, and the more modern ones, is in the, the camshaft drive gear. The backlash of the straight cut gears in the early units was corrected by changing to spiral gears on the 1915 and 1916 models. We believe this is the only facility where engines of this type are still in continuous use. To conclude our program, and we think back on the people that we called old timers that drilled this field a hundred years ago here at Millstone and built this compressor station here at Heath 75 years ago to 
pump gas to Buffalo and realize that that same facility is still doing that same job today, we have to wonder at the present time, with all our technology and knowledge that we have, the tools that we have to work with, whether the stations we build today will last that long or not. We thank you for the opportunity of presenting this program to you.